welcome to this week's Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. We are in Las Vegas at the NAB show. It's a broadcasting show so we can learn more about all the technology to bring you the best stuff. So I'm going to just kind of go over uh, lots of stuff we're working on, but I have two awesome guests at the end that you're going to want to stay tuned for. So the first thing I wanted to say is we have these brand new Stitching with the Housewife shirts. If you don't know about Priscilla and Chelsea, you should check out their YouTube channel, which is called The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. So if you don't know about Priscilla and Chelsea, they have an awesome YouTube channel called The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch and Priscilla designs uh, patterns for hands-on design. And they have a brand new sew along starting. It's called Land That I Love and it's by Country Cottage Needlework. So this is the pattern. It's gonna be, we're, we're selling it right now, but it is not gonna ship until this Friday or next Monday. So if you wanna order it, it's just a pre-sale. And I've been working on mine. I've spent 18 hours. And so I'm gonna kinda show you what I've done different. I changed the M and the C slightly. And I, um, Instead of doing French knots on the bird's eyes, I just did a regular cross stitch. And then when you come over to Uncle Sam, I got a little, um, I got a little messed up on it. I was trying to make his eyes a stitch rather than a, than a French knot and it really didn't work. So I unpicked it and I'm gonna restitch it. Um, the holes got a little big. So what I'm gonna do with that is just take my needle and run it across it and get it kind of even before I restitch it. So that's kind of what I'm working on. And I use my new cross stitch journal. I've got everything ready for Mania. So with Mania, I've got all my projects listed. So if y'all want to take a peek at what I'm stitching for Mania, it's all right there. And then um, I've got all my pages filled out. But then, uh, so I put 32. This is my land that I love. And you can see I'm keeping track of my time. And that's how I know that I'm at 18 and a half hours. So we've got that. So one thing I wanted to show you guys today was the sewing method because I keep getting questions on it. So I'm going to do a little bit of stitching here and show you my tips on how I've got that to work. There's lots of ways you can do it. So um, you have to kind of find what works best for you. So I'm going to... This has been really handy that I showed you guys last week. I've got all my needles in it. And it's made it really easy for me to keep all my needles together. And I'm gonna be using the John James Petite Needle. It is a shorter needle and it works really good for the, for the sewing method. But the one thing is they break. So um, you have to have a lot of them. Um, and I think the reason they break is because I'm using Ada and I'm also um, using it in the Q-snap. So, and I haven't really, got it down perfectly. So that's the only issue that I've had so far. But to do the sewing method, you really need um, a shorter needle will work better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go. And I'm just gonna do a couple of stitches and just give you some hints and explain what the sewing method is because we keep getting so many questions. And I did do a video on this previously, but I don't remember what video number it is, but we can find it and then link it below. So here, I've got this. I just need to keep going down with the frame. So, do you want me to just sit down? Yeah. So I'm gonna kind of start with the loop method. So I'm gonna start it with the loop method. Okay, so to do the sewing method, the best thing I've found is you loosen your Q-snap so that you have a little bit of give. And 
the sewing method is where your needle never goes to the back. It always stays on one side. So as I pull through, you want to kind of tighten it at the end. So I kind of, you know, pull a little bit just to get them really straight. And so you can really save time by doing this method. Uh, sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. And again, it's just total per personal preference. We're just showing you this because um, we've gotten so many questions. So there's that. So if you want to sew along with this sew along, it is hosted by Priscilla and Chelsea. And if you want to hashtag it, the hashtag is PC land that I love. Obviously PC is for Priscilla and Chelsea. So there's no rules on it. You can start whenever you want. You can end whenever you want. I just happen to have a ton of time this weekend and I, Really, what I want to have, my goal, I always have goals in life, but my goal for this is to be done with this before mania. So I will show you next Wednesday how far I get. And also next Wednesday, I'm going to be giving you framing tips. So you're going to want to check out next Wednesday also. So I'm just going to put this away because I don't want anything to get dirty. And I'm putting them in my little plastic bag. And then my cross stitch journal, those are going to be shipping in a couple weeks. So I think you're going to love it. It's a great product. I've been using it um, for all my stuff, keeping myself organized. And really what it's best for is, you know, a lot of times we have all these great goals to do things and then we forget about a project and then we come back two years later and then we cannot remember what thread we started with or, you know, what cloth we had or, or if we want to redo it or we want to replicate it we don't remember what we did so having a cross stitch journal is going to just really help you get everything organized so that if you ever need to remember what you did you can go back to it easily so it's a great it's it's like a little cross stitch vlog like you just keep track of what you're doing so i'm going to show you a couple other things before our special guests come online and i am so excited about my special guests so oh also on land that i love there is going to be a floss pack that Priscilla Blaine put together using classic color works. That's on our coming soon page. So if you're somebody who's wanted to kind of start with fancy floss, um, that's gonna be on our website also. So just to recap on the land that I love, follow the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. There's no rules. You can do it any way you want. We've got the pattern for sale. It's gonna ship uh, later in the week. We're also gonna have a thread pack if you wanna make it in the colors that Priscilla has picked. She's changed the colors. And now I'm gonna show you a couple other new things at Fat Quarter Shop. So Little House Needleworks had a um, pattern program last year called Farmhouse Christmas. There are nine patterns. They all come out the exact same size. And on this program, they have free on their website, a free border chart that we're going to link in the descriptions. So if you want to make these singly, you just have the pattern. But if you want to put all nine of them together in one really big chart, there's a free, free um, link. And we're going to put that below. We also have a couple new patterns, Little Dove Cross Stitch. We just received that in and we're going to have that online soon. And she does really cute stuff with magazines. And a lot of times her stuff will come out in the Cross Stitcher magazine and then she will release it to the public in like six months. And her stuff is super cute. And so we're super excited to have that on our website. And um, we also have just a couple new patterns. And um, we saw this one mentioned uh, by Priscilla or Chelsea in their video and thought it was really nice. So we have that. And then we're continuing to add to the Jardin Prief patterns. So you can find that on our site. So we've got lots of new stuff. And then also now, um, this week, I have more information for you on our fabric club. So um, if you want to sign up, we've got a fabric club for Ada or linen, and it's by Wichelle, and we're picking neutral colors so that in your stash, you will have a big stash of neutrals. Yeah. So July, and this is the Ada. August, it's called white chocolate. September is beautiful beige. October is just white. Who doesn't need white in their sash? Venetian stone is November. 
And this is used a lot in the tiny modernist patterns. Touch of gray is December and it's got a little bit of hint of aqua. Ivory is January next year. We've got natural light. Cafe Mocha. And then we've got the same thing in linen. So I'll just kind of go, go through the linen real quick. They're the same colors. And so the Ada is a 28, is a 14 count, and the linen is a 28 count. And they both come, these are fat quarters. So it's a generous size. And it's a way to just have stuff in your stash. So if you find a pattern and you just really want to be able to go, um, we will have that. And then also we're going to have DMC online in a couple weeks. They're still, we're still waiting on it to arrive. But we will also have Classic Color Works online any day. So that is totally exciting. So guys, that's what I have for you guys today. Remember next week on next Wednesday, we're gonna be giving you tips on the Quilters Cottage Sew Along. It's our very last week. And I'm gonna give you tips on how Lori put her frame together. And then we're gonna do it a slightly different way. And we're also gonna be giving you tips on how you can label the back of uh, what you frame so that it can be unique and kind of customize it to you. And now we have some special guests. So I'm gonna introduce them and then Lily is gonna take it away from there. So this is my mom, Patty. I talk about her in the live stream all the time. We're in Vegas. And so um, I'm gonna let Lily ask her whatever questions she wants. <laughs> and then I'm gonna be watching from over there to make sure she doesn't say anything crazy about me. But, um, and if you guys have questions for her, you can of course put them in the comments and then Lily will ask my mom for the answers. So um, that'll be kind of fun too. So I'm gonna step away and Lily's gonna oh, go for it. Gonna stay here. Help me. <laughs> Do you want me to stay? Sure. Yeah. Okay, but what if you say something bad? Then you'll just slap me. <laughs> okay. Aww. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first question, uh, people want to know if you quilt, crochet, and or cross stitch. Well, I can quilt, but it's not my favorite thing. I can crochet. But what I do most is embroidery on the embroidery machines, and I like to di do digitizing and digitize some of my own designs. But I do a lot of the uh, jelly roll quilts because they're easy. <laughs> nice. Um, how did the CMAs go? Oh, they were fabulous, except we got there late, but that's okay. <laughs> but I got to really see my George Strait four times, and that was unbelievable. Yes. And Keith Irwin, and of course... Keith uh, Urban. Urban, and of course, Carrie Underwood, and uh, it was really neat to see how they do things live that you don't see when you're watching on television. And of course, I had a good time. I was with Lily. Yeah, I had a blast. Um, and then we went to a Cirque du Soleil show last night, Ka. <laughs> How did you guys like that? Well, I went to Ka because I got the tickets for you guys. And I did it because Kimberly said she has this most wonderful employee named Lily. And she wants to see Ka. So I saw it for the third time. And I still do not understand the whole story, but maybe the fourth time I'll get it. Oh. I don't know. Like to me, it was just pure art. I'm not really an artist. So to me, I just didn't get it. Um, the whole time I kept thinking how dangerous it was. Yeah. Um, or I was like trying to figure out like things pop up and like sticks come out and arrows come out. And I'm like, where'd that come from? How much does the set cost? How many? And then the one thing I did is I did count all the staff. I always count everything in a room because I have OCD. So there was like 58. So if I counted 58, I don't know, but that was my contribution to Lily is I counted how many staff are there. Yeah. These ladies are awesome for doing that for me. Um, and what was the worst thing that Kimberly did when she was little? Well, I wish her dad was here to help share this story. But when she was, uh, I don't know, eight or nine, uh, we lived out in the country. We only had the three major ch channels, ABC, NBC, CBS, 
And there wasn't even it, Fox. It, like, that didn't exist. There was nothing else. Three so finally, they, they got cable out in the country. And I thought, we kept trying to get Dad to sign up for cable. But and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. Oh, it's too much fun. Too much blah, 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 blah. So I come home one day, and all of a sudden, I got all these channels and even HBO. And I'm going, what in the world happened? I said, and I, I told him, yeah, I said, we got HBO. We got cable. Thank you. And he said, I didn't do it. So I called. Yeah, I was called. like in fourth grade and had she, cable installed. She called and signed us all up for all this stuff. And boy, did she get in trouble. And <laughs> till the day her dad died, he still never really forgave her for doing that. So <laughs> one of the funny things I did is like back then, like the two movie channels, it was just Cinemax and HBO, I think. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I think we can probably afford HBO, but not Cinemax. But so I only got HBO and he was like, well, good. You're never going to get the other one because you, I was in so much trouble. But I did. All my friends on the street had the cable and I was like, I got to have cable too. So I just called and installed it. Uh, like, I was so happy she did it because I got to watch some TV. Oh my God. <laughs> but then, okay. So another funny story is when Emma was like five or six, she's like exactly like me. She doesn't look like me, but she acts exactly like me. So it's payback. So one day she called, she got on Amazon and she ordered like all this stuff, like a thousand dollars worth of stuff. And it was when I was like not home. So I couldn't see that she did it. So then we had to return everything. And I called my mom. I was like, mom, can you believe Emma did this? I don't know. I can't believe she did that. And she was like, well, do you remember the day that you installed a cable? It's kind of payback. And I was like, okay, I'm not calling you anymore. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, and earlier, you were telling me a funny story about one time you sewed a pillow. Do you want to share that with us? Uh, well, a pillowcase. I always wanted to know how to sew, but I was in the band, so I could never take home economics in school. So when I graduated, I bought myself a portable sewing machine, and I thought, well, now I could make a pillowcase. I could do that. And I made a pillowcase, but I sewed both ends together. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But then my mother in law, sweetest lady, she helped teach me to sew, but then I took some classes and taught myself to sew and sewed a lot of little things, just frilly things for this little baby of mine here. And I crocheted a lot of things for her when she was a baby. Yeah, I and, still have one of them. Like but I always yeah. wanted to sew because I'm tall. And if I bought a long sleeve shirt, it would hit me here. And if I bought pants, I, they were, you know, what do you call them? High waters. High, High waters. So I was able to learn to make my own clothes so I didn't have to show my ankles all the time or my wrist all the time. And it just felt good. All right, uh, and I also made square dance clothes. We square dance. I made all of our square dance outfits. and and Bill's uh, Western shirts, and I even made Western shirt for our son, and uh, an outfit for little Kimberly here. Um, and we've seen you on the live chat sometimes. What is your favorite video that Kimberly's done or favorite thing to watch her do on our live streams? I like to watch her when she's showing you how to make a quilt, because uh, I'm not real good at it, and it takes a lot of time, but watch it, Kimberly. Uh, I've made a quilt where I turn on the video and then I pause it and do what she says to do, and then turn it on and watch another segment, pause and do what she says to do. But I only made a, about half the size that she made it. But, and of course, I have it on my phone where every time she's videoing, it pops up. So I just really watch everything she does because I'm so proud of her. and. I just think the world of her, and she's so successful and smart and beautiful, and can't say too many nice things about her. She's great. And I, this week, this couple of days being here in Vegas with her in a different environment, it's really fun, especially for me as a mom. That's beautiful. That's all the questions I have. Is there anything else? So, guys, I want you to ask questions to my mom in the descriptions or the the comments the comments below i never know what i'm saying and then we'll ask her and then we can have her come on again or we can we can just answer them or whatever so um we're ready for our next guest and not but i do not cross stitch okay oh yeah no, <laughs> no cross, no but cross she does stitch. have a cross stitch of um one day she told me i didn't have any cross stitches 
And I was like, you do? And she has this Texas cross stitch. She's like, I don't even know it's cross stitch. And then she has a cross stitch of her dog. I'll tell you a funny story about the dog. So y'all think I love Piggy, right? So my dad, this, I can't even, this story. Okay, so my dad had this dog. We got the dog when I was in high school and he kept going back to this dog store. Now I know, don't tell me anything about like, going to a dog store and buying a dog. It was in the 90s, like a long time ago before it was like known that it was bad. So he kept going to this dog and he kept coming home and telling my mom, I gotta get this dog, I gotta get this dog. And my mom was like, I don't want a dog. Hey, I don't want a dog. He comes home one day with this dog. He loved that damn dog. He did everything with that dog. The dog dies. And then my dad dies. And we go to plan the funeral. Funeral's totally un like we're not expecting anybody to die. We're not ready to do a funeral. I'm pregnant, everyone, the whole family's there in the room, like me, my brother, his wife, my husband, my mom. So then all of a sudden my mom comes out with like ashes of the dog and it's like, well, Bill, I guess you get the dog. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And well, she had him cremated. So and she had the dog first. cremated and whoever died first got the ashes. And I'm sitting there going, we're trying to plan a funeral and we're worrying about the damn dog. Well, and then we lot. all, so then we all cracked up. And the only one that was like normal, not cracking up was my sister-in-law. And she was like, why are y'all laughing? Anyway, that was a good story. So my dad had a dog and he loved that dog just as much as I love Piggy. And he's buried with him. Yes. But can you imagine you're like planning a funeral and then out comes a box and I, I didn't I even just, know what's going on. I just I'm like, said, oh, dad gets chewy. Oh. And we're like, I didn't understand. I was like, what the hell is going on? I mean, I was just like, I think I was like, first of all, in shock that my dad died. And then she brings, the, and then we're just like, and then my husband's looking at me like, your parents are crazy. I don't know. Anyway, but he had told my sister-in-law, okay, the one thing he had, he had told my sister-in-law so that there would be evidence so that somebody would do it. And so my sister-in-law was like, yeah, yeah, he had all this plan. I knew about it. <laughs> so like he made sure that that dog was going to be buried with him. But anyway, that's my story. <laughs> so our second guest today is Gabriel Fuentes. He is like our biggest super fan on like all the social media. And he's like, Part of our Kimberly Stitch Squad, and he's so awesome. And he like sent me a message last week and was like, "I live in Vegas." I was like, "What? I didn't know you lived in Vegas." So he's coming. He's gonna chat with us. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to Priscilla that his name is Gabriel, not Gabriella. And this is him. He's like famous even Hi. on the Real Housewives of, of Cross Stitch. So um, he's our biggest fan, and so we thought it would be fun to like have him in the video and just ask him some questions. Yes. Yeah, of course. Okay. And I'm, oh, I feel really bad because I didn't bring him a shirt. That's okay. Don't worry about it. So next time we come to Vegas, he will have a shirt. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, how did you start quilting uh, or other crafty things? So, um, like I, I was just telling your mom, how I started quilting was because at my local Joanne's, I was taking the Wilton cake decorating classes. <gasps> And well, I wasn't I good at it. it. I was not good at it. Oh, I would have heard and everything. Then, so, um... The, la the lady who was teaching, she's like, well, I'm getting into quilting, you should too. So that's, I took a quilting 101 class at my local Joann's like five years ago. And then ever since I've been doing it. And then I cross stitch and I started because I would watch Kimberly and I was like, oh. That yeah, was... and I feel bad he should have brought his stuff. But you know, no, the one okay. thing is the very first kit we came out with, be joyful, right? Be joyful, yeah. And so he would like send me and say, does this look good? And like his stitches are like perfect. I'm like, how did you go from like zero to like perfect? His stitches are good. Yes. Okay. Oh, I dropped the questions, guys. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. My handwriting is really bad. Well, this is male culture. Oh, <laughs> what well, we were supposed to talk Sorry. about. Um, okay, so. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Are we gonna cut, to the, how are we gonna cut transition from that? I'll just fade it. I know. So I don't fade it now. Well, you're supposed to ask this question. Okay, yes. Uh, so, male quilters are kind of rare in this industry. Uh -huh. um, what is your perspective on that, being a male quilter yourself? I just look for things that, like like everyone else, I just look for things that appeal to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm more of a minimalist. Like, I don't like too traditional, but I don't like too, like, modern. Either, so like so, in the middle like in the middle yeah i'm more of a minimalist and i think it's great because like a lot of you guys will say like you don't feature male quilters enough or there's not enough male quilters and there are you just have to like find them and they're like becoming more part of the like so i think i see a lot more in social media instagram like 
So if you have questions for him also, you need to put those below yes. because I know he can answer them himself yes. because he's always or on there. Or you can just ask me and Kimberly Stitch Squad. Oh, yeah, and Kimberly Stitch yes. Squad, yes. Thank so he's going to like help be a moderator for us uh, along with Peach. So I'm super excited. Yay. Okay. And then what are your top three favorite fat quarter shop videos? Oh, yeah. This oh. is a good one. <laughs> We put him on the spot too. I don't know. I watch all of them. I, I'm just. Or which ones would you recommend if you're someone new to quilting? New to quilting, um, I would do the je your jelly roll quilt, the one that takes the jelly oh jelly roll, roll jam. Jelly roll jam. That and that's one. our number one video of all time. It's um, the worst video ever. Any of your basic. Your, any of your basic quilting videos that you guys put on there, like the tutorials um, that require like jelly rolls, fat quarters, your... Those are called shortcut quilts. The shortcut yeah. quilts. So this would be pretty easy for the cobblestone quilt. Seems really easy. I oh, haven't yeah. made it yet, yeah, but that, I one, that one. I was looking at the pattern the other day. It just seems really easy. So yeah. I would start with any of the shortcut quilts. Those seem pretty easy. And all of those are free patterns along with free videos. So if you go to the Fat Quarter Shop website and then under site favorites, it says free patterns. If you go under there, they're all free. Yeah. And we'll link that link below. Uh, okay. And then what is your favorite fabric collection or designer? My favorite fabric collection right now, it would have to be, I still have the Della Luna by Tula Pink. Oh, That's one of the only, I'm so afraid to cut into it because yes. I have not have found the perfect fabric Pattern. for it. So I have it all stored in a little so sampler box waiting to <laughs> cut it open, cut nice. it up to see what I can do with it. So is Tula your favorite designer? No, just the, no, she's too modern for me, but I, <laughs> I but. Okay, but so pick I, a designer. A designer, I would have to say, my t my top two would be Bonnie and Camille or Glory Holt. Those two would be yes. Those are mine too. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm too scared to sew with Tula Pink. I've never sewn with her stuff, and I think it's because I don't know what to do. I don't know. Like I can totally see it where I just cut it into squares and then do like solids around the outside, but I'm like that too. Or I would have to feel like I would have to fussy cut every face. Right, or, that, and that's what I was thinking about. But fussy cutting the faces yeah. and then putting something around it, but I was just I need a I'm, Yeah, maybe Peach, you can find a pattern for him. Yeah. She's all about like researching for everybody. <laughs> And guys, I want to apologize for not being on Kimberly's Stitch Squad the last like week or two, but like I have a lot going on with my kids. Uh, Emma, I got home at nine o'clock Sunday and flew here. I woke up at four fifteen, flew here. I will get home Wednesday night around midnight. Thursday, I got to work all day, and then Friday dance starts up again. So like I'm just really busy, and my kids and my family always come first. I love all my customers. I love you guys, but I do want y'all to understand that I have a family, and my kids are like. I'm even flying home early and I'm like, I don't need a gamble. I just need to get home. I'm flying home early to, to surprise Emma. So I'm hoping that Emma's not watching this video right now, but hopefully she's not. Uh, and there will be a Friday live stream. Now. Yes, we're going to do a Friday live stream. Yeah, I'm going to get home and get all ready. Um, so you mentioned the Sew so Sampler box. Yes. What has been your favorite Sew so Sampler? It was actually just the March. March and January were my two favorites. So far. Yeah, January. Yeah. And there is a waiting list, and it's um, it's getting longer. Sorry. So but hang, hang tight if you're in it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any tips for beginners in cross stitch? Um, just take your time. At first, because when I was watching Kimberly on live stream, I was like, well, how do you do it? Because I. He, and you could even, like, in Kimberly Stitch Squad, ask him directly, because he was asking me, and I would show him. Like, right. didn't I take a photo? Right, yeah, yeah. Like, he was like, well, zoom in on this. Yeah, so just take your time. As, and I was afraid, because I, I didn't understand the concept, because I'm more of a visual learner. Uh -huh. So as I was doing it, I was like, okay, it seems pretty easy. So as long as you can count, you're yeah. fine. And I would say start with Ada. Don't start with linen. And then if you are ready to go from Ada to like a linen where you stitch over two, start with an even weave because that way your squares are even on each side. Um, but start with Ada and don't, you don't have to listen to everybody who says linen is the best and even weave is the best and da, 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 da. do whatever you want. And like I always say, start with the easiest. Don't feel dumb. Just do, I do Ada. Everything I do is Ada because right. I think it's, I want it to be easy and quick and 
And a lady on Kimberly Stitch Squad, she bought some linen from Hobby Lobby. And she's like, my eyesight is too bad, so bad it's I can't bad. see it. So she sent it to me, so I'm going to try linen. Yay! Oh, yes. I got to see. So I'm going to... I can't do it. We'll have to keep us updated. Yes. And then I was watching, I, I want to give credit, of course, but I don't remember who it was, but they were saying that they do linen and they do, they have a floss tube. But she was saying that she's a magnifier, uh, whatever, magnifier, I don't know. Yeah. And then she said it really hurt her because now if she doesn't have it with her, she can't do the linen. And so that's something to consider because she was saying it's a great tool. But if you like, I think she was saying, oh, I went somewhere and she's like, then I got too used to it and it was too hard to go back. So that's another reason to stay with Ada. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was going to ask, um, like, what pattern designers inspire you? Just anything I think is pretty that I would like or my, because I usually make quilts for my family. I barely keep any that I make. So I usually just find whatever, like the last quilt I made that I recently had quilted was um, Summer Bunting by Amy Butler, I think, the, it's like little okay. flag. Okay, um, yeah, 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 And yeah. I did Poppy Love by Riley Blake for um, my nephew. And then, so I just look whatever I'm looking for, whether it be my nephew, my niece, um, my sister, my mom, whoever, I just look to see what they would like and then that's how I did. So one thing that I wanted to say that's so interesting and I'm so like mad at him for not telling me is he works at Starbucks. <laughs> like what in the world? You have been watching me forever and you direct messaged me and you didn't tell me you worked at Starbucks. Yes, what in the I'm world? A barista. Oh. Yeah, so I um am like so upset with him because he works at Starbucks and I love Starbucks and I didn't know he worked at Starbucks and he works at the Starbucks at MGM. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, that's like the dream job. <laughs> So he knows how I like my tea. I told him, like, when you go places, like, most people don't make it right. It's yeah, hard. Like, I, they don't understand. When I go to Starbucks, too, a lot of, they don't, even the baristas don't make it right. Because I know, I have, like, I make it to a tea how I like it. So when I have other people make it, it always doesn't taste right. So just yeah. hashtag barista problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Um, the last one was just, like, talking about Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook. Oh, yeah. So, like, tell us, like, um, how you found Kimberly Stitch Squad. Like, what it, what is it? Uh, so, some, Kimberly Stitch Squad is a group found, made by Kimberly. It's just where we, where everyone goes who quilts, knits, crochets, crochets cross-stitch, and you can just share your project. It's a very positive, fun environment. No bad stuff no negativity and if you post negative stuff i will just delete it and kick you out i have no time for that yeah uh last question i'm just kind of gonna throw at you um so some people have been asking what is our youtube channel membership uh that is on our quilting channel um and i know you're one of our youtube yes. members and i always see you in the comments like trying to help people out so can you just break it down for everyone what that yeah is? so the youtube membership it's 4.99 a month um you get your cute little emojis and the piggy emojis are my favorite yes. and then um you get like sometimes they'll give us free patterns coupons um exclusive live streams with kimberly where it's just the members and we get to talk to her so it's more a little more personal because there's not as many people in the chat so it's not going as crazy and yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun yes so we just want to thank you for coming on no so problem excited. Uh, we're gonna go shopping with my mom for a little bit. She wants to go to the Brighton store. And let me tell you, we went to the Brighton store, she found it, and I was like, oh no. She found the Brighton store. And there's no signs on it with what time. So he looked up what time it opened. So like, I think we're gonna go to the Brighton store. And I wanna apologize if the sound is not great. What we had planned was doing a video on the gondola, but they said we can't film there. So we had to nix that plan. And um, if the sound's not great, I'm really sorry, but we hope it was fun and I will see you guys on Friday.